Hi, Jeff Lawton here. I'm going to give you a casual tour of the Green in the Desert site, September 2018. Okay, I'm going to take you for a little bit of a walk around the project. Here's our vegetable garden, which has just been planted at the end of winter, start of summer. We've actually got a lot of people working here. That's the noise in the background. We've got tomatoes and eggplants in early. Most people haven't even planted yet. So now I'm going to walk you through the site and we can have a look at some of the trees. Here's Ampty here. Say hello, Ampty. Yes, hello. Ampty's our main gardener, Nadia's mum. Okay, so this is Albizia Lebec, one of the great legume trees of dry lands. Let's just have a look at the nursery as we go past. Uh, We've got our nursery, so the, the water from the nursery that falls on the floor goes into the vegetable garden. Can't waste a drop of water around here. Here we have Albizia Lebec, and we have all kinds of legumes and support species here. And we have uh, a lot of moringa planted over there. There's moringa coming through from our own seed. Uh, there's some more of it down here. We have some Brazil spinach there, uh, more moringa, some ice plant there, or portulaca ground cover we use a lot. Everything is quite stressed because it's the end of summer where we've had massive temperatures. Here's some actual olives that are going out to new school gardens. Down here we have a, a lot of recycled polystyrene, I know, but they're polystyrene recycled vegetable trays and we've got some beans coming up there and uh, it looks like some pumpkins and there's some, there's some capsicums. Here's our dog Nimri, he's our local guard dog. Okay, Nimri, let's step back out this way. And the first thing I see is a pomegranate and behind it, uh, in the sun, is a classic image of a pollarded leucina. Now those branches are coming out from stems that were cut about 11 months ago when I was here. That's 11 months worth of mulch there in this climate. In about a month's time, we'll cut all these again and they'll put all their leaves and branches on over winter and then give us shade over summer. Here's a small cassia bush. That is a little cassia we've got seed in here. This is a chop and drop as well. That would have been cut 11 months ago. And here's one we don't cut windbreak tree you can see it working right now uh, with that hot westerly desert wind coming through from Palestine. We've got a few of them here protecting this edge. It's Casuarina torulosa, one of the great casuarinas of the world. Another leucina, there is citrus right underneath. Okay let me take you for a walk around. Classic view there of uh, that leucina again and here's an olive. It's not a good year for olives this year. They're alternate years, they're good. There's a few olives on, but it's, last year was our good year. So here we have Tacoma Stands Tropical Honeysuckle family. It's not a legume, but it looks like it. They're incredible mulch producers. Wow, they produce mulch. Um, you've got to love Tacoma Stands for its ability to pump fast carbon pathways. Here's a Moringa, beautiful. Look at that Moringa. We've been very successful Moringa here and we've got a kind of porch, uh, no, uh, a um, Ipamea vine. It's not a fruiting vine but it's a great shade vine. Our chicken pen, passion fruit going up the side of our chicken pen. We're hoping to get it right across. And here is one of the Prosopus stumps re in. There's no Prosopus in mature size left on the site. They've all been cut to the ground. Um, another olive here, young olive, and here's one of our young citrus. And we've got citrus performing now, at last. We've got citrus with fruit on. It's taken us a while because they like a little bit of acid soil. This is not the easiest landscape to work in, um, and that's putting it very, very mildly. Okay, more young citrus here. Uh, a young date there, passion fruit vines. Olives and dates are our big crop. Uh, young citrus here and we're on a little footpath below a swale. Uh, more dates, casuarina, more olives of course and here's a carob. Here's a beautiful carob. Look at that. Gorgeous. I'll walk on contour because it's nice and smooth. Here's Barkinsonia, sometimes called false olive, it's not a legume. I don't know whether it fixes nitrogen, but it sure pumps mulch. You can just cut it, abuse it, it comes back every time. I cut this one to the ground 11 months ago, it's back. And behind, again, look at all that beautiful mulch that the leucina's produced. 
and all that shade, enormous amounts of organic matter. Here's one of the other palms. This is um, Washingtonia. Uh, palms usually fix phosphate with mycelium fungi relationships, so I don't mind the odd Washingtonia. And uh, there's another one coming up over there, look. And um, here's one of my favorite ground covers. I'll just give you a, a glimpse of this. That's Singapore Daisy, Wedelia. You've got to love its ability to persist even in the most rugged of situations and insulate the ground. Okay, now I'm passing out under one of the last spiky legumes we've let stand, and that's Jerusalem Thorn, what is called Parkinsonia. It's in full seed. It is a local endemic, local here, um, which is great. Um, I can see some citrus fruit over there on the young citrus. And uh, let's walk on down here and uh, have a look at some of the other. We've got the species. There's a pomegranate, some old pomegranates left on. And uh, here's a uh, hibiscus tiliaceous. We've got a few of these. They're actually from Australian coastline, like an alkaline condition, seem to like it here. We chop and drop them for mulch. Another pomegranate I'm going past. Um, Ponciana. I've got a few Poncianas coming through. They'll be quite regal. And underneath here we have a key apple. And it's flowering right now. And more dates. And more date, dates to eat. I just love eating dates fresh off the tree, <laughs> off the palm. Papaya. It's quite successful with papaya now. And more Singapore daisy as grand cover. And look at that, we have some wild bees here on the Moringa flower. Oh yeah, you've just got to love that scene. Look at them go, pollinating that Moringa. Lovely, what a lovely thing to see. All right, you lucky people. Here we go, we're going on up. Uh, different kind of date there, coming a bit later. More Moringa, a little bit of a dark section in here. Dark's good in the desert, shady. We've got uh, papaya, we've got a nice citrus in there. We have a lemon here coming past. Uh, we have a kumquat. And uh, there we have a guava. We've got two beautiful guavas here. They were in, they had good fruit on when I arrived. And I must admit, I'm guilty. I ate them, I'm sorry, I did. I can't resist it. They're white, fle white fleshed Indian guava. I had to eat some fresh fruit from the site. They were my first harvest. Um, I'm a bit of a poacher when it comes to food forests. Um, hard to hold the fruit on the tree if I'm around. Okay, now right above me is neem. Look at that. We actually pollard the neem quite a bit too. And uh, that's a good looking neem and we have plenty of them. And there's a snail sleeping in the neem there in a dry period. Well, it's mostly dry here anyway. So I would say that neem doesn't burn. Usually a good indicator of a fireproof tree is snails use them as a uh, hiding place when it's really dry. And you don't have to worry about finding dry periods here. Oh, we've got an enormous leak. Hey guys, we've got an irrigation leak up here. Just had to shout that one out. Sorry about that, but it's a bit loud. Look at empty go. Take water pretty serious when you haven't got much. So yeah, there's the guavas from the other side. Citrus, Barkinsonia. We're starting to repeat a little bit now. Olives, olives. Um, uh, here's a jacaranda. Uh, one or two jacarandas around. Um, and uh, the flowers here over the compost toilet of course, a bougainvillea. A bougainvillea flower best in infertile ground. So that's kind of testament to the state of the ground, I suppose. Um, now going up next to the toilet block, more young citrus, more young citrus, more young citrus. Here's our large water tank. Yes, we get water delivered. Um, and sometimes about two or three times a week, the mains comes on and um, we harvest the mains water. We capture every bit of rainwater we can, soak it all in, but we don't get enough. And we would need 20 times the area we're using to produce, to harvest enough to recharge the aquifer. 
We know that, we tell everybody that sustainability is going to happen maybe one day when there's a tipping point and everybody realises that we can do it and we can do it all together. And it won't happen until then, I'm afraid. But we've got to demonstrate what we can do if and when it happens, that we all agree that it probably should be international policy or at least informally we all think and design sustainably. Now I'm right at the top of the site where we have least water and it's the hardest conditions. So this is where it's difficult, but this is where we're also getting a result. This is one of our stone wall earthback swales. And there's three of these on the site. One goes from corner to corner, the lowest point on the highest boundary over the longest distance. So you can see now we're getting a result with our citrus. Our citrus is starting to come quite good. We've got a kind of darker area here and we're just redoing our reed beds. It took me 10 years to get people to understand that reed beds were crucial. Of course, everybody knows water's crucial in this climate, but it's not until they see it perfectly recycled with a simple system like a reed bed, they realize how valuable reed beds are. And we've got another leak here. Maya, on. Here's some citrus. I think that one's an orange. Here's a young carob. Look at this for a harvest. Wow. Look at the amount of gates on this thing. We just gotta love them, eh? In fact, in fact, I've gotta, I've gotta eat one. Yeah, let's just pull a couple off. Mm -mm. We've got fruit on quite a few of them. A lemon. You can see the amount of compost that we're bringing in. These actually, these mounds are really deep holes. They're like giant deep banana circles, about two meters deep, that I've filled up with all the extreme spiky mulch that used to be on the site. And um, when we converted from the very, very hardy pioneers through. Oh yeah. You want limon or? Limon. Limon? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Looking good. <laughs> these these big holes have really changed this area because there's a, it, it's kind of like a a hugel pit with compost and manure on top and legume mulch. And um, the whole this is one of the hardier hard areas of the site. Ah, oh, grapefruit or pomelo. Pomelo. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, tropical citrus, the most tropical of all citrus, the pomelo. And uh, little tree's doing all right. Um, and we're under another neem. Let me pass the young cab, but if you could just see what kind of canopy we're getting here. Like, it's it's quite comfortable and shady. And this is, this is the end of summer. There has not been one tiny drop of rain since March and look there's green grass I know most people are impressed with green weeds it's actually green here that's not normal that doesn't normally happen and little weeds like this are an advantage you know every little bit of fruit that's coming we know it's going to make it if it's here at this time of year it is going to live there is no question if you've made it to the end of summer temperatures are now getting down to 35 degrees Celsius and over Palestine today, there's been some clouds. Wow, there's actually some clouds up there. It might rain. Um, we got some spoilt loosened hay, real cheap. Uh, some cats had some kittens in there. You baby kittens all right? Meow, meow, meow. Baby kittens? Yeah, have a lot of baby cats. We have chameleons on site. We have a hedgehog on site. Um, Here's one of our swales again. Let me take you for a walk down these swales. This is what the, what the top side of a stone wall earthback swale looks like. It looks like a normal swale from above, but it's got a stone wall on the lower side. There's a stone wall on, on the lower side and a trench on the upside. That's the kind of mulch I like to see. I like to see a living mulch like that. You can see that trees responding a bit better. And uh, here's another Albizia Lebec and a neem that's been cut right off almost at the ground. Just bounced straight back. Beautiful. Um, 
can see there's a bit of water accumulation in the swale. If we get a little bit too much irrigation here and there, we we'll just catch it in the swales. Look at that, that's, that's a beautiful example of ground cover there. Now let me show you what some of the spiky mulch did look like. <laughs> this is Acacia farnesia uh, that was cut last year. All of this has come back. And look at that for spikes. This is a seriously needle sharp spiky little thing. Uh, sometimes called perfume acacia, acacia farnesia. And uh, we've, we've taken all those out now, um, or taken them down to pollards. This one here is the same, farnesia, taken off at the ground. So that's a coppice. We'll cut them back this time. We'll stop them growing leaves and they will die. Some of the local kids are hanging out, coming round, giving us a hand. And one last thing, let me take you up and show you our chickens. They're going to roost at the moment. Our improved chicken pen now we're about to put little sprinklers, while well, we've put them in, above, sprinklers all ab uh, above each pile of compost. There's the compost. There's the mulch underneath the roost, ready to, to go in. There's our young chickens roosting as high as they can for safety. We've got some neighbours coming in. And we'll just walk down through the veggie garden, back down past the worm composting system. You can have a real nosy look. There we go. Coming back in the veggie garden. There's a prosopus come back from the ground. <laughs> look at that spiky thing there. They're really spiky. We've knocked them all back now. We're trying to build lots of shelter on that western side because that's where the real heat of the sun comes. Let's go into the shade of the shade house through the emerging veggies. Out down the side. More neighbours coming in. Worm farms, new walkways going in. I know a lot of you? Oh. Okay, you've been working, yeah, mm -hmm. I know. All right. And uh, now, wicked beds. Naima, hey. Uh, new pathways going in, new tool shed going in, uh, compost toilet for the classroom. Just over there, water tank waiting to go on top. And uh, new footpaths being built. All kinds of things going on. And the organic coffee shop and retail outlet. There's my, there's my Trevi, there's my, my mode of transport when I'm in Jordan. I risk the roads. Maybe I'll do a GoPro run for you through the suburbs. Pretty exciting stuff. Keeps me excited anyway. So this is the final fit out. Uh, looking pretty nice. Opens up to the street. There we are. Coming out on the street. And that's what our front looks like. Hey, deliveries! Okay, there we go. It's all happening. It's a happening thing.